that one thing you've learned from sci-fi and shows and, and, and movies that you for sure know would go to in an apocalypse case? <laughs> oh, that's a really good question. No one's actually asked me that before. Um, I don't know about all sci-fi and apocalyptic movies, but I would say in this one, don't light a fire after dark. <laughs> that would be my biggest advice in the Fallout apocalypse. I feel like adapting a game is one of the most difficult tasks anyone can ever take their hands on and I think you've done this beautifully. I wanted to ask you what do you think is uh, the criteria to know whether or not a story from a game is going to work? It's a great question. I, I think people are treating gaming, video games as a genre. They're not really video games, another another storytelling medium and a, a, very, a very powerful one. And one of the challenges in adapting them is is you're t you're taking away so many things. You're taking away the audience's ability in, in these games to explore the world, to go in any direction they want, and to chart a course for their character that is either you know morally upright, decent, you know, or 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 you know, or the other way around. You can be the hero or you can be the villain. In a series, you can't you can't do that. We're taking that freedom away. But I think when you're looking for something that makes for a great adaptation. It's the same criteria for, for me that I would apply for, for anything I'd be looking at, whether it's a novel or another movie or, or a video game. You're looking for something that you're obsessed with, that you love. Uh, I think I've been lucky enough in my career to work only on things that I, that I love, that I'm passionate about. And Fallout is a game that I was passionate about. I never played anything with the same tone, with the same weirdness. So it was a, a real honor to, to get a chance to work on this. What kind of questions about, you know, humanity, its nature, and even its fate, um, did you have to ask yourself in order to, to uh, bring to life this game? All of them that we could think of. Uh, that was the job. Uh, we just sat around and asked, asked ourselves questions a lot. Um, humanity's fate? Yeah, okay, we talked a lot about the end of the world. Uh, and we started writing the show before COVID. Um, there were multiple rounds of like, is this the end of the world uh, conversations as we uh, wrote, produced, and edited the show, which was a three-year span. There were enough times, though, to make me wonder if like, is this just the human condition to constantly be like, the end is nigh, you know, uh, every maybe 18 months or so, <laughs> we just decide the end is nigh. And we kind of went back and looked, you know, I grew up in the 80s, the end was nigh then. Um, I, I, in the 90s protest culture, uh, the end was nigh then. It just sort of seems like it's non, nonstop. So maybe we have an addiction to, uh, to calling it. <laughs> I calling think so, it. Yeah. You need to go home. Vault dwellers are an endangered species. I do not think you would be willing to do what it takes to survive up here. Do you believe that there's a downside to being that positive in such circumstances as Fallout? Absolutely, yeah. I think that's Lucy down to a T, basically. Um, yes, there's uh, there's bravery in, in being positive when faced with adversity. And and um, there's also, you know, it can also be stupidity. 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 Uh, I cannot stupidity. speak today. It can be stupidity. Stupidity. It can be stupidity. Um, <laughs> You know, if you're too trusting of someone who doesn't have your best interests in heart, then you could be caused to suffer. Um, and I think it's a, that's basically Lucy's entire arc. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think there's a, there's a, there's a value to it, of course, but I do think that it seems like the, the, the world of the wasteland is built and to, to strip that from you, it, it's, it's nothing but lesson after lesson of how you are going to be, you're hurting yourself by trusting and to, you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's like we, we, maybe we all end up like the ghoul if we spend too much time in the wasteland. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's where we're headed. And we, we maybe lose our lose our positivity. Okay, okay. Well, Alec, it makes you feel better. I was watching the show and I was like, I would definitely be Lucy in these circumstances. I would be <laughs> I don't think that's a great thing <laughs> to survive. But I also think that this character is amazing. And I also feel like, um, you know, as audience members, the only actual chance we have to see what would happen if it was the end of the world or the apocalypse or anything is this type of show. Um, and I feel like, 
we feel like we know what to do just because we see you doing it in, in, in a show. <laughs> What's that one thing you've learned from sci-fi and shows and, and, and movies that you for sure know would go to in an apocalypse case? <laughs> Oh, that's a really good question. No one's actually asked me that before. Um, uh, well, I, I don't know about all sci-fi and apocalyptic movies, but I would say in this one, don't light a fire after dark. That would be my biggest advice in the Fallout apocalypse. Yes. I thought you were going to say find friends. Find friends, shelter, water, food. All of that goes without saying, Aaron. I feel like everybody knows that's what you're supposed to do in the apocalypse. I don't know. I know, you gotta find shelter. Oh, we also lost. Jonah, what is it that um, you think would uh, people would take from Fallout to in, in survival mode? And then, Kyle, what is it that you know you for sure would do in this case that you've learned from TV and, and movies? <laughs> <laughs> Bring water. Lots of water, sunscreen. <laughs> water and sunscreen. <laughs> Can't go wrong with sunscreen. <laughs> now, I, I think one of the things that's, that's, that's interesting, the, the Fallout, all of the Fallout games in the series kind of points to is the, this sort of essential ingredient for survival. You know, as Americans, we tend to think, well, we you know, you know, we need a gun and you need, or you'd need, or, you know, a rock to hit someone over the head with. I think that the, the point to me, one of the points of the series is that the essential ingredient for survival is community. We don't make it by ourselves. Mm. And what would even be the point of making it by yourself, right? That humans are essentially, uh, uh, you know, a com communal animal. And that, you know, one of the things that's so surprising about the games and the series is that when Lucy's character makes it to the surface, expecting to find a, a handful of, you know, of, of, of miserable orphans, what she finds instead is community after community. You know, that there are these factions that have survived, that mm. there are groups of humans that have banded together to, to sort of make it. Some of them good, some of them some of them not so good. But I think that to me, you know, if you ask me what I what what I would need to to survive the the apocalypse, it would be community. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, all Fallout is is a uh, is a accumulation of all the ideas that everyone has ever had. It, it's there's references to uh, Canical for Leibowitz. There's references to a boy and his dog, Mad Max. You know, this is sort of the uh, the collage of a uh, history of uh, of end of the world fiction. So um, yeah, I, I I hope no one gets any ideas, but I, I my hunch is they already have them. <laughs> I mean, maybe they can survive with those ideas. Who knows? Right? Yeah, yeah. I do think there's a tendency for people to think that they do really well in the apocalypse, and I, <laughs> I, I think there's a, a a hubris there that is maybe misplaced. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I don't Everything. think we do so. If you insist on staying, then you will have to adapt. Lucy is almost like an alien in this world. You know, everything surprises her. She's discovering the world in a very naive way. What is it about this world that, even though you didn't know anything about it, still surprises you even now? I think it's it's about kind of unlearning everything that we take for granted. Um, I think you have to kind of strip back and think, okay, well, if you're actually in a vault your entire life and coming up to the surface, and Jonah said a great thing. He said, he said, I don't think you can see very far, which I thought was really interesting because, yeah, it, you, your eyes wouldn't know how to focus on a long distance when you've only lived in the vault and there's a, you know, a limit to the amount of... Expanse. Yeah, yeah expanse yeah. that your eye can perceive. Um, how you can take in light uh, how does like dirt feel under your feet? Hit a wind, anything like that? All of those experiences are completely brand new. So you're right, she is like an alien <laughs> or like a newborn baby who is just like in a 28 year old woman's body and just has to live life for the first ever time. I think, um, I mean, there's a lot that still surprises me, but, but that's something that I'll never forget. It's like having to strip all of that back. I've never had, I've never been challenged to do that before. Kyle, I love that we don't really get to know a lot about your, about your character in the first episodes, but we know he's a big deal and, and a huge thing. And I feel like you have a very unique talent to keep mysterious, uh, keep mystery um, in your characters. And I want to know how do you manage to do that and to you know show it on, on uh, to the audience, even though you do know what's going on and what's going to happen. Well, thank you. No, I think I'm helped a little bit by my past, uh, my previous roles. There's a, somewhat of a, a little bit of an expectation for that, I think. 
Um, but really, it's uh, it's about finding uh, the whole approach to, to a character is the balance. So I want to know I want to know everything on both sides of that yin yang symbol and what and where it exists. So he's a very positive, upbeat, you know, character in the beginning, and he really believes in what he's doing. So the other side of him, while it's while it's we'll we'll find I can't say too much what we find out what's happening, but um, from the very get go, it's like he is he is serving a purpose, believes in a purpose that is greater than kind of where he is, and we we discover what that what that is uh, towards the end. Um, and um, and that's so that's part of it I think it's just really the playing the truth of, of that of the other side. Mm. Aaron, what I love about Maximus is that he really values the meaning of the armor, and he actually believes that means um, the world can be improved. How much do you share that vision? And even when we see things in real life that might lead not to think that. Yeah, I think that there's something admirable about seeing the real ideal of something. You know. Uh, and ideals get often, I guess, tainted by uh, or abused by, you know, some in the in the real world. You know, it's it really is a beautiful thing to him, and it's something that is really close to him. And it's his greatest desire is for the power or what what he thinks it means and what he thinks it does for him. Um, but it's 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 an it's an incredible adventure. You know, I can't wait for you to get to finish this thing because. It, you know, it goes all over the place. Tomorrow, so they say, will... I think that um, both of these characters' values are sort of challenged because there's no law, you know, like there's no, there are no rules. How would you describe their concept of justice? That's a great question. I, I mean, I think that every part of your experience on the wasteland is coming up with your own personal moral code and your own personal definition of what justice means to you is it the golden rule is it vengeance is it an eye for an eye or is it you know is it kindness what do you i don't know what do you think i think for, for maximus i think he sees it as eye for eye I, and you know i i think that's what's always been done to him you know uh i think you know these two characters it's it's amazing that they get the opportunity, you know, to to take from each other, and and help one another with with, you know, what I think they both are needing is maybe potentially in the other at, at some points, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it, what a what a what a wild ride the wasteland is, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm we're so excited for people to finally get to watch this. I see.